Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the first Fallout 76 news video that I've done in what seems like, well, quite a bit of time. Yesterday, Bethesda released the 2021 roadmap for the game, so we'll spend a little time checking that out, reviewing some of the commentary from the Inside the Vault article it was attached to, and I'll fill you in on my thoughts about all of it, and maybe temper some expectations. While this is full of exciting stuff, some of the things I've seen bounced around the community, I, I think we'll realize is probably a bit of wishful thinking. Remember, if you like videos like this and want to see more Fallout 76 content, be sure to go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment. You can also follow me on Twitter at FissyMcRib if you want to be sure to see all of my updates. Alright, enough with all of that, let's take a look at the roadmap. As we can see, like other roadmaps they've done in the past, they've broken it up into four seasons. Spring with Locked and Loaded, Summer with Steel Rain, Fall with Worlds Are Changing, and Winter with Tales from the Stars. Let's take a look at each season individually. So for Spring, our update here is called Locked and Loaded. It's going to include Season 4, which is titled Armor Ace in Cold Steel. We've seen some of that from the PTS already. Looks like a Canada-focused version of Armor Ace with a little bit of pre-war American propaganda going strong. Uh, the quote here is, Prepare yourself for Year 3 of Fallout 76 with an update focused on ways to upgrade your camp, your person, and your arsenal. We've got three main points here, Camp Slots, Special Loadouts, and Daily Ops Expansion 1, plus Crafting Sliders, Console Aim Assist, and Camp Mannequins. The Inside the Vault piece here really just encourages you, if you play on PC through the Bethesda Launcher, that you can actually check out most of this update now on the PTS. And that's true, just about all of that is ready to go. Taking a look at it here and some of my thoughts, uh, we did check this out on the PTS on a live stream uh, when it first came out. So if you want to see more of it kind of live in person, you can do that. I'll link that in the eye right in the top right here. But uh, just some brief thoughts on it. This particular update seems to be more of a quality of life and general game improvement update more so than new content. Season 4 is going to be here. We're going to have new challenges and new rewards and there's a new theme for it. But to me, I don't really view seasons as content in the true sense of the word. They are uh, they are a list of challenges and there's some rewards there that we get and, and I'm glad that it's there and it's fun to do, but it's not really content. There's no story there. There's no new characters there. There's not a lot going on there. It's some skins. It's some camp items. It's some consumables and a reason to do something in the game. So it's worth doing. It's good to have and I'm glad it's there, but uh, it's not really major content, but that's okay because here we've got things that players have been asking for for a long time. Multiple camp slots is going to be huge for builders. Special loadouts is going to be great for, honestly, players like me. I'll be able to take a build where I can now have an alternate on the same character where I couldn't do that before. We were limited to five characters and that would limit what I can do and what kind of weapons I can test out and play with. So now I'll get a lot more flexibility there and so will you. The Daily Ops expansion is great. It's a stealth oriented Daily Ops and uh, adding more variety and challenge to that is going to be great. Crafting sliders, excellent quality of life update that people have been asking for for a long time. Console aim assist, uh, I honestly can't say that people have been asking for that. It, it seems like kind of a, a neat idea, but I'm just not sure that it's necessary. Uh, we already have a great aim assist in Fallout 76. It's called VATS. It works great. Uh, this seems kind of like a solution in search of a problem, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. And then finally, Camp Mannequin, so we can display all the rare outfits that we collect all the time and all the outfits that we pick up from the Atomic Shop and things like that. So solid update, not a major content update, but definitely a, a big housekeeping update that's going to bring players some things they've been asking for for quite some time. The next update in the summer is a little more interesting. 
We'll of course see Season 5, Escape from the 42nd Century. I assume this will be KD Inkwell related, and that's cool with me. I thought that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. I wish there was more to it than just pictures on a game board. I thought it was such a cool concept that I would love to play a game based around that. I think it would be great, but uh, we'll take what we can get. The big piece of content for the summer is going to be Steel Rain. Forge the future of the Appalachian Brotherhood in the conclusion of the Brotherhood of Steel storyline. Complete new quests, meet new NPCs, explore new locations, and earn powerful new rewards. So in Steel Dawn, we met Knight Shin and Paladin Romani, and we witnessed a split between them in the Brotherhood of Steel. And we kind of had to pick sides at the end, or maybe had to pick sides at the end. Maybe we could be a little wishy-washy on it, but it sounds like we're going to have to choose in Steel Rain, and uh, we'll see how that goes. My hope is that that piece of content is a little meatier, a little bit longer, a little more impactful than what we had in Steel Dawn. Steel Dawn did a good job of kind of setting the tone, but I hope we go a lot deeper with Steel Rain. If it's just another three or four hour kind of thing, it, it's going to be a little disappointing for somebody like me that really loves Fallout for the story. But uh, we'll wait and see. Maybe there'll be other things around it too. Maybe we'll see something like the Wild Appalachia updates where there were miscellaneous and side quests just added to the map randomly. Uh, I would love to see more of that. But uh, we'll see what happens with Steel Rain. Regardless of how long it is, I'm looking forward to new content. That'll be great. Then on top of that, there's going to be Legendary Crafting, Legendary Power Armor, and Seasons will have unlimited ranks. That's something players have been asking for for a long time when they finish the season early. They feel like they don't really have a reason to go in and play. And this will at least create some kind of reason to go in and do those challenges and not kind of feel left out the whole time. Legendary crafting and legendary power armor will be interesting. Uh, for a little more on that, we can reference the uh, blurb from Inside the Vault. And there it talks about to survive the wasteland, you need good gear. This summer, craft specific legendary items using legendary modules. Tailor your build to perfect your playstyle. Now, I really hope Bethesda pulls this off well. I'm optimistic. I think that what we saw with some of the items from Wastelanders where we could craft them with legendary modules, I think people responded generally well to that. They have not responded well to the way things are done with the new Steel Dawn items. Uh, those unique items where you can't craft them with legendary modules and you have to rely on RNG to get them. Nobody's happy about that. Nobody's got good ones. Nobody's got anything fun with them. You don't see people showing off their, their incredible Crusader pistol build or anything like that because it's so difficult to get those items. Now, I don't know the extent of this. I don't know if this will be a handful of items that you can craft with random legendary effects, if this will be a way to craft specific legendary effects on specific items, we really, or if this might be a new way to craft uh, just the, if this is just going to be some of the old recycled items from the survival mode servers, like the unstoppable monster and some of the things we've seen revisited back in the game here. It could be as simple as that. So my guess is it's going to be somewhere in between or a mix of those things. It's really hard to say, but uh, this is one area that Bethesda's got to nail this. They've got to get this right. If it's too limited, then players are going to be upset because they're expecting to be able to craft legendary items. And if you can really only craft a few things that nobody wants, then nobody's going to be happy about that. But they also have to be careful that if they make it too easy or allow you to craft too much, then all of a sudden you're going to have everybody have perfect gear all the time and there's not going to be much of a reason to keep playing. So... There's a balancing act to do there, and I understand that, but uh, I hope they hit this one right. I hope they test this on the PTS and get some feedback before they go through with that uh, to make sure that they're really meeting the needs and expectations of the players. As for Legendary Power Armor, I really don't know what to expect there. 
I would imagine that they will have new legendary effects for power armor, but I don't know. It could be could be recycling e existing effects. So uh, if that's the case, get ready for your nocturnal power armor torso drops and uh, learn to love them. Or uh, maybe we see new stuff. I don't know. Maybe with legendary crafting, it's new legendary effects. And uh, only those are craftable. It's really, really hard to say. But I would say on this one, we should temper our expectations a little bit. It's good to be excited about it. It's a cool thing. But uh, let's not assume too much here. I don't think that you're going to be able to just go buy legendary modules and craft yourself a bloodied faster fire rate fixer in 10 minutes. I don't think that's how this is going to work. Uh, maybe it'll be close to that, but I doubt it. Let's move along and take a look at the fall update. Now, this is the really interesting one. It's very vague. Worlds are changing. Stay tuned later this year for the next evolution of private worlds. And then we also get Daily Ops Expansion 2. So uh, really all this says is that we're going to get more information closer to release, but private worlds are going to be changing. And I think it's fair to assume that this probably means that mods are coming. Now, here again, we should temper expectations a little bit. I don't think this is going to be a situation where you go to the Nexus and download any crazy mod to do any crazy thing you want in the game. Uh, my thinking here is that these are going to be at least somewhat curated through Bethesda.net, much the way that uh, you can download Fallout 4 mods from Bethesda.net. That's my guess here, so I don't think we're going to get anything too crazy, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do it. I wonder if we're going to have a more permanent private world, if we'll be able to invite more friends. For me personally, I don't really care all that much about mods, but I would love to have a private world where I could have 24 people or 100 people on all at once and invite viewers on, on live streams to join that world and do events and play the game together. I think that would be great. But... Uh, that's not how it works right now. So right now, private worlds are not all that useful. Right now, they're really only good for if you really want to play the game by yourself without anyone else around, then your private world is great. You can also use them to transfer gear, but they're not really used for much. I use it when I, when I film video stuff, but other than that, I always play in public worlds because that's where people are. And you can only get eight people in your current private world. So that's a little bit disappointing. So I'd like to see a change like that. But uh, my guess is this is where we see the introduction of mods, at least in some way. I would expect that the first iteration of that will be fairly limited. I don't think that that's going to mean it will always be that limited. Perhaps it will expand as time goes on. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what they say later in the year. But I think that's what we're going to see here. Private worlds are changing, and this could even be a bit of a shift in the marketing speech a little bit. You may not see them even refer to them as mods. You may see them just refer to them as private worlds with enhancements or things like that. So they could be steering it more in that direction, more away from the concept of freewheeling, do anything you want to do mod to private worlds with different things that you can do, changes that you can make, settings that you can change, uh, perhaps different things that you can download from Bethesda.net that are mods, but they probably want to maybe control the wording there a little bit so they don't get people thinking uh, that it's going to be too freewheeling. Of course, in this update, we also get the uh, second Daily Ops expansion. I'm looking forward to that. Daily Ops, I think, are a great addition to the game, but uh, in order for them to really shine, we need more variety there. So the more of those they can add, the better. I'm definitely excited for that. Now let's take a look at the last update of the year in the winter. In this one, we've got Season 7. Stay tuned to learn more. So they clearly have not yet decided on a theme for that one. But this one's called Tales from the Stars. Stars have aligned in the wasteland, marvel at the discovery of new legends and the reappearance of an Appalachian myth. Here we're going to see the introduction of four-star legendaries. 
a new seasonal event called The Ritual, and Invaders from Beyond, Public Challenge and Daily Ops Surprises, plus Camp Pets. If we look at the Inside the Vault commentary here, we see that straightforward gear up with all new four-star legendary weapons and armor. Then after you've spent a long day in the wasteland, come home to your very own camp pet. So that seems pretty straightforward. We're going to see four-star legendary items. What those will look like? Hard to say. That's a long way away at this point, but uh, I assume we're going to see just some new legendary effects get added to the legendary pool. I really hope they take that opportunity to rebalance some of the things that are already there, get rid of some of the garbage effects, change some of them that are really bad. Uh, how many times do I have to talk about how bad bashing damage is or how stalkers doesn't work or how nobody wants nocturnal? So all those things can be shifted around here. It's a great opportunity to do that, and I really hope they take advantage of it. Next up, we have one that I think needs to be... We have to dump a big old pile of water on the excitement around this one. I'm seeing a lot of commentary about Invaders from Beyond and how people think this is going to be a new public boss event. Um, that's not what this says. And I don't think they did this by accident. This does not say a new public event. This is a public challenge. Public challenges would be things like when we killed Scorch Beasts before Wastelanders, when we did the Brotherhood of Steel thing where we collected a bunch of junk and took it to Fort Atlas. That's along the lines of what I think we're going to see here. This is going to be a public challenge. It does sound like they're going to insert new enemies into the map as part of it, which I think is really cool. That's a much better way to do it, but... I don't think that we should look at this as though it's going to be some big new endgame event. If it is, I'll be thrilled. I will be happy to be wrong about that. But if this was a new public event being added to the map, then they would say public event, not public challenge. So I've heard a lot of people talk about it that way, and I am not at all expecting that. So, uh, you know, be as hopeful as you want. But don't say nobody warned you if it's not what you think it's going to be. I think this is going to be much more along the lines of the community challenges that we saw in the past. That's really what this sounds like to me. I hope I'm wrong. I hope this is a new endgame event that stays in the game forever. I just don't think that's what it is. If that's what it was going to be, I think that's what it would say specifically. Now, the big thing here, though, is we do have a new seasonal event. And that's going to be the cultists of Appalachia are up to something sinister in the ritual. Help the cultists in Point Pleasant prepare an exciting and dangerous ritual, and they'll repay you with unique rewards. This is something the game has needed for a long time. We've had Meat Week, we've had Fosnot, we had the Halloween event at the White Spring that didn't happen this year. We need a new in-game seasonal event. And if the game could have a few more of these... I think that will be really healthy for it in the long run. One thing that I think longtime players have gotten a little frustrated with is seeing Meat Week and Fosnot just recycled over and over and over again. Having a few more seasonal events, bringing back that White Spring event. If you were to add, right now you've got Meat Week, Fosnot, the White Spring event, you've got the Holiday Scorched event, and that's really about it. So... If you were to add two more to that, where you could have a seasonal event every other month in the game, I think that would be great. That would be enough variety that you could keep them fresh. You could run them once a year instead of two and three and four times. And that would keep players satisfied and interested and not feeling so repetitive. So I think that would be a good thing. And uh, it sounds like they're they're moving on their way to doing that. One or two more, and I think they seal the deal with that. So I'm looking forward to see what they do with that this event. I wonder if it'll have something to do with the uh, a creepy thing at the bottom of the lucky hole mine or that you find in the deep. I don't know if they'll go that far with it or if it'll just be uh, collect some stuff, put it here, fight an enemy, everybody prance around in costumes kind of thing. Either way, it's fun. Seasonal events are fun no matter what, but... Uh, I would love it if they incorporated some of the bits and pieces of, uh, of world building they've put in the game around the Mothman cult, but we'll see. 
Now, the other big thing you've got here, of course, is camp pets. That's something that people have wanted for a long time. I'm fairly certain that's going to be an Atom Shop item where you're going to be able to get dogs and cats and any number of things. And all I have to say about that is if I can't get a pet liberator, I'm going to be upset. There will be unpleasantness if I can't get a pet liberator. That's all I've wanted since the day this game came out is a pet liberator in my camp. So hopefully we can get one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, really covers the 2021 roadmap. I am excited about some of these things. I am a little bit disappointed about a couple of them. I'd like to see a little more story content. But uh, at the same time, I also understand that the world is still dealing with COVID. We had the uh, major crisis in Austin with the big freeze there. And so Bethesda is recovering from these things as well. And I'm sure that that probably put a delay on some things that they were likely planning. One thing I was looking forward to was uh, expeditions, something that would take us off the map. And that was something that they talked about a few times in the past that sounded like it was going to come by the end of this year, but looks like it's been delayed unless that's going to be folded into Daily Ops now and be part of maybe that second Daily Ops expansion. Uh, but I don't know. I'm really just speculating on that at this point. But uh, that's it. That's the end of the roadmap. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found some of it informative. Remember, if you want to see more Fallout 76 content, do go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff. There's always a lot going on on the channel. I do hope I see you next time. And until then, I'm Fisty McRib.